Hi everybody! In this week's video I want to talk about the Critical Evaluation Planner Part 1 because it's a bit of a doozy. So we didn't have anything specifically due last week. Um, your tasks were to basically read things, prepare, get ready for this week, um, including reading the article Ungrading by Susan Blum and finding an article of your own that provided counter evidence to Susan Blum's article. Um, so what I'm going to do in this video is talk a little bit about filling out this planner. Um, you can probably tell if you've been following along and reading the things that you were asked to and looking over the assignment details that you were asked to, that the critical evaluation is going to be all about looking in depth at the article ungrading to see if it is a strong, well-written, rhetorically constructed, um, in a effective way, uh, article. You're looking at the article as a whole to see if it's effective and if it is well-written. That's kind of the overall goal. We did a little bit of that in the last unit, but this is really going for it. Um, we're really getting into the nitty gritty here. And you can tell that because we're looking for specific pieces of evidence. We're going to be analyzing it on a pretty focused in uh, degree. Uh, so that's what the critical evaluation planner uh, helps you do. This is a planner that helps you look over all of the evidence. So this is the part one of the planner. We'll do part two next week. This section of the planner focuses on evidence and counter evidence from your supplemental source. So those are the things we're going to be focusing on. And we're, we'll talk a little bit about logical fallacies in here as well. There's a tiny bit in the first section that's also about summary elements because you are going to need to summarize as you have been doing. You're going to need to summarize the article that you read in order to present that as a paragraph in your paper so the reader understands what exactly we're looking at. So you can see it's divided into summary elements and then there's a section about evidence, there's a section about fallacies, and there's a section about counter evidence. So those are the things we're gonna be talking about. If you look over here at my handy dandy comments, this is the document I included in the announcement. Um, and I included this, these comments, because if you click, you can see, if you mouse over, you can see that I've included hyperlinks. I cannot guarantee that the hyperlinks will um, necessarily work for things like this. It might redirect you if you click on it. It might redirect you to um, sign in to Dell Tech. Um, it might not work. Um, but I did want to include this anyway because it does name the resource. So all of these resources are available to you. The evidence and how to evaluate it resource as well as the ethos, pathos, and logos resource. Um, these are located in the Unit 4 Learning Materials. In fact, all of them are going to be located in the Unit 4 Learning Materials unless stated otherwise. Like this one is from Unit 2 and I've told you that there. This one is um, in a different place in the class, but this should take you to the hyperlink that's um, just the regular inside higher ed hyperlink. Um, and you can also find this article where you've been finding it all along, because at this point you should know that this is the article that we are evaluating. Our critical evaluation for everyone in this course is going to focus on Blum's article called Ungrading. That is reading number... So anytime it talks about... Um, Instructor provided unit four reading, um, the fourth reading, that is going to be referring to the article Ungrading by Susan Blum. So what it's asking for here is the article information. Um, so the author we know is Susan Blum. She might have a middle name and um, I'm going to add middle initial. So I'm going to look that up. That's another reason I included these. So if you do control click, this should open this up because you can actually open up the resources and look, oh, there it is, Susan D. Blum. Okay, so this is by Susan D. Blum. This is a lot of work in this worksheet. So if you've tuned in, thank you very much. I'm going to be doing some of the work for you. Um, and this video might actually turn into a two-parter depending on how long it takes me to show you examples of this because it's a doozy. Um, the title is just... Rating. The website is Inside Higher Ed. Let me double check and make sure that's correct. Inside Higher Ed. Yep, Inside Higher Ed. Okay. 
and the publication date is November 14th, 2017. Um, the topic you guys can figure out from scrolling through and looking at the title and looking at the keywords that repeat, the phrases that repeat over and over again. Look at the topic sentences, look at the thesis statement and figure out what the topic is. Remember that the claim is going to be, as always, follow this formula, the topic plus the author's take. So if you think that the topic of this is cantaloupe and the author repeatedly talks about how much they don't like cantaloupe, then the claim would be cantaloupe is disgusting if that's what the author says over and over again. You're looking for the topic plus what the author feels about the topic, what they have to say. And then the main points from the article you can figure those out yourself. If you need to add more, you are certainly welcome to just keep going with these letters. You can type them in yourself. Um, the main points are going to be the points that you think are the most important for actually pulling from the article. So just because it says ABC doesn't mean that there might not be um, a D and an E as well. But the main points that you think are the most important that need to be included in the summary. What are her major points? Um, I believe... Yeah, so she's got these different sections of her paper. So as good a critical thinkers, I would consider maybe thinking about how to split these up along the lines of like, she's got a section for introduction. She's got a section for um, reasons down here. And she's got a section about solutions and outcomes. So those might be places, these headings might be places just that would be natural things that you'd want to include. So maybe a bullet point about the outcome, summarizing what she sees as the outcomes or a bullet point summarizing her solutions. Um, so this is a good place for you to practice your summary, just the main points that you think that are important from the article. The evidence section is what we're going to talk about now. So I have right here this link to use the evidence and how to evaluate it resource. So I'm going to control click. We'll see if it redirects me. Yes. So you may have to do this too. Uh, so you might want to do it on a computer where you're like already logged in. Um, and then it will take you to our course. Um, you can see that it's in unit four critical evaluation writing, unit four learning materials, evidence, and how to evaluate it. All of these bolded terms are the types of evidence. I am glad you're watching this video because I'm going to give you a piece of advice. The piece of advice I'm going to give you is that you should probably start by looking for types of evidence rather than just pulling random quotes out. Because what you might be pulling out might not actually be a piece of evidence that you want to spend time evaluating. Um, you are probably going to want to look for examples of statistics of personal experience, anecdotes, and testimonials, of facts, of scientific evidence, of hypothetical examples. I would recommend that you start by looking for these rather than just pulling a quote from the article and trying to identify what it is. Uh, because not everything in an article is evidence. Some things are just opinion or restatement. Um, what you're looking for here is actual evidence, facts, statistics, expert testimony, etc. So I would recommend by starting here. So I'm going to do one right now. I'm going to look for in her article, I'm going to look for a piece of evidence. Probably should have done this already, but fine. Um, okay. There's a piece right there. I'm going to double check myself. Anecdotal evidence is evidence from anecdotes and typically involve the personal experiences of an individual or group. Um, okay. And then I'm also going to check myself because remember that there's such a thing as expert testimony or expert opinion, which is the opinion of someone in the field who has considerable education and experiencing. Um, if I look at 
these things, I might want to keep in mind that a lot of what this woman is saying is probably going to count as expert testimony because she is an educator. So she's going to be drawing a lot from her personal experiences. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is maybe a mix of the both. This seems more like an anecdote. Um, and there's some expert testimony in there, but I'm going to, I'll, I'll put it in here and I will examine it. So this is going to be the quote that I pick. I know it's one of those at the very least. Times New Roman, Times New Roman, total point bombs. And I'm cutting and pasting, so I'm going to have to do that a lot. Um, Blum, 2000, and what would I think it was 17? And I didn't count the paragraphs. Um, I think it was actually that was just like in paragraph two. Paragraph four. Paragraph four. And it was 2017. You can tell I've worked with this before. Um, okay. So paragraph four. Yeah. So I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to call this because she's not calling on her expertise here, although she does in many other places. In this article, when she talks about doing this and the results she gets from her class, that is a form of expert testimony because she's talking as an expert in the field of education in those cases. So in this case, she's specifically just telling a little story about what she decided to do. So I'm going to identify this as an anecdote. That's the type of evidence it is. I'm going to look at uh, last summer as I prepared my classes, deeply immersed in the thinking that had led to the book. I decided I would go all the way and get rid of grades. Um, so I'm going to think a little bit about the persuasive appeal that's happening here with this anecdote. Um, uh, typically maybe I'm going to back it up and see if I need to add I'm actually going to back it up a little bit because I think that this is part of um, a larger, I'm going to include this too, because I think that this is a larger part of something that is meant to um, evoke pathos because it's really personal and it's kind of talking about some of her worries. So I'm going to add in a little bit more. Um, and you can see that this is, you know, not necessarily a perfect enterprise that I'm <laughs> enga I'm engaging in here. I'm just trying to kind of show y'all like a quick and dirty version of how you can you can fill out some of this information. So this is going to be Times New Roman. This is going to be 12 point font and I'm going to unbold. There we go. OK, so I'm going to say that this is a pathos appeal because she's really talking a lot about emotion and about how this is an emotional thing for her and her teaching, etc. So this is an appeal to pathos. And that's what I'm going to add here. Really hate forms like this. Um, they bother me. If you want to be weird like me and fix all of this formatting, you can, but you don't have to. Um, <laughs> it's fine. You don't have to get as weird as I'm being. So that's my quote. It's an anecdote. It's pathos. And here I'm going to evaluate the evidence in terms of relevance, accuracy, and credibility. Um, and so relevance, I'm actually, and I recommend you do this too. I'm going to write each of these things out. And if I have trouble remembering exactly what each of the, these mean, I'm going to click on this to give me a quick definition of the terms relevancy, accuracy, and credibility, because the finding crap article talks about each of those. If I forget which persuasive appeal I might be dealing with, logos, pathos, or ethos in this case, I do also have a link to the article there. So I'm just going to open this and I'm going to see... Um, that relevance talks about the importance of the information for your needs. Um, so in this case, uh, your needs would be how relevant is this to the author's overall main idea? So if the main idea is about how, like I said earlier, um, I can't even remember my example from earlier, but if you say like cantaloupes are disgusting, if that's the author's main takeaway, how relevant is this piece of evidence to proving what they're talking about? Um, 
Accuracy deals with the source of the information is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's authority. Uh, accuracy deals with the reliability, the truthfulness, and the correctness of the content. So does 